Hi guys, welcome to the price action trading course. As usual, I will need your pen and paper. If you don't know anything about my background, basically I'm a Singapore based speaker and also I speak overseas once in a while. Quick disclaimer first, make sure you read this. Okay, so basically what is price action trading? What you are doing is that you are analyzing the current or recent price movements. And the good thing about price action trading is that you can apply it into stocks, bonds, forex, and also derivatives, markets, basically futures and options. And it's very popular among short-term traders. But with that said, with that said, even as a long-term trader, if you use 70 to 80 percent fundamental analysis, you still need to use technical analysis to spot a better entry point. So there are a lot of indicators that you can pick from but why is it that price action still works after so many years is because most indicators lag behind price. A lot of the indicators for example momentum indicators, CCI, RSI, stochastics, all of these indicators they lag behind price. So it has the closest resemblance to tip reading and also order flows. So back then when trading floors were really popular, a strategy that is used by professional traders is tape reading. Basically, you just look at the numbers and you trade based on that. There's no indicators, there's no moving averages. Look at the price high and lows volatility and trade based on that. Reason why it works is also because everybody is looking at the same charts, but also there's a downside to this because if you trade just like everybody else, you will achieve the results that most people achieve, which is lose money. I'm talking about the retail trading world, okay? It's very easy to grasp as compared to if you learn something like MACD, there's like so many components to it. It is a little bit more complicated. And you can use it to time your entries better. Especially if you are using indicators, you can add price action as an additional confirmation. So what constitute price action. What does price action comprise of? Let's divide it into two main parts. The first part I call it details. This means that you look at the small details, you look at the smaller picture, you look at the candlestick pattern, and then you look at the chart patterns. On the other hand, you can also look at the market conditions. You gotta check out what is the trend right now. Is it a bullish trend? Is it a bearish trend? Is there no trend at all? And if the price is going sideways, then you need to take note of that because what you can do is that you can spot potential support and resistance. So when it comes to price action, these are the four main things you need to learn. And of course, there are many tools that you can add to this as well. To become a successful price action trader, you need to understand the different types of market conditions because it's just like driving a sports car. When you reach the highway, then you need to change to a different gear. But if you're driving at a very narrow road with a lot of cars, then you need to drive differently. So it's the same thing with trading. When it's a trending market, you need to use different tools. When it's a ranging market, you need to trade differently. The first type of market that a lot of people like, especially stock investors, is a trending market. And not just any other normal trending market, but it is a trending and non-volatile market. And this type of trend, where it is trending nicely and not volatile, it is the easiest to trade. And not only that, it is the best for beginners to trade. So if you're a trend trader, you're a trend follower, this kind of markets would probably be your favorite. So if you're a gamer, you can say that this is level 1. Then if you become better at your game, then you can trade another type of trading market but a more volatile trading market. So this requires a lot more skills. Because the thing about volatility is that even though it gives you a lot of opportunities, but then it also causes you to get stopped out a lot. And the most frustrating thing about this type of market is that you might be right about the long term direction, but you might still get stopped out because you place your TP target over here, right? And then you place your entry somewhere here, then you place your stop over here. So what happens is that the price comes up 
and then comes down get you stopped out then eventually the price go your way and then hit your tp target then people be like why did i put a stop loss to volatility can be your friend but also can be your enemy understand that so you can say that for a trending volatile market it is harder to trade as compared to a trending non-volatile market so the next type of market condition if you are to just look at this area over here this is called a ranging non-volatile market this means that the market is going sideways and it's not that volatile it's not that chaotic and normally this type of market doesn't last very long but the good thing is that it is easy to trade especially if you range trade using support resistance but with that said with that said if you want to pursue range trading you gotta be more experienced first you need to learn trend trading first before you get into learning how to range trade so the other type of market i would say one of the most challenging ones is ranging and volatile so if you trade the range using support resistance you are going to get a lot of false breakouts but for the sake of this course let's put things simple let's just look at trends and to be specific the more stable trends okay so you can see a bullish trend over here so there are four main components you need to take note of the first part over here is a ranging market at the bottom and this is called the accumulation phase more on that later after the accumulation phase you would have a bullish trend okay so this is the trending phase and then followed by a ranging market at the top this is called the distribution phase again more on this later after the distribution phase which is a ranging market and normally it is more volatile as compared to accumulation phase you would have a bearish market and then the whole entire cycle repeats again and again so after the bearish market then you would have accumulation phase again then followed by bullish trend of course in the real world things are not that straightforward sometimes you would have a bullish trend and then the market would go sideways but the ideal trend basically looks something like this accumulation phase a little bit more details about that it is a ranging market and it occurs at the end of a bearish market so you can say that it is the start of a bullish market and during the accumulation phase you can use range trading or channel trading strategy and in the context of a stock market this is where a lot of smart money or smart stock investors they are going to buy because accumulation phase occurs at the end of a bearish trend and hence a lot of stocks are undervalued just like how the stock market crashed earlier this year in march so this is where the smart money buy shares and if you are a currency trader you pick tops and bottoms this is also where you can buy and normally it will consolidate longer as compared to distribution phase so aside from march 2020 stock market crash of course another stock market crash that you know is the 2008 stock market crash so you can see stock market crash over here and then at the end of 2008 to early 2009 markets went on then accumulation phase it kind of form a v-shape over here but overall in the bigger picture it kind of ranges in this area over here so the next phase you have is the bull market bull trending phase where you make your money after you have went in during the accumulation phase so some strategies you can implement during this phase is trend trading and also breakout strategies so a lot of traders they would use chart patterns so along the way maybe they'll find an ascending triangle or a bull flag pattern and then they trade breakout based on that so some indicators you can use during this phase moving averages trend lines chart patterns trading and be careful when you trade in the bull market because one thing that's going to happen is that a lot of buyers are going to 
gradually come in as the bull market starts to develop because it's just like the Bitcoin saga a few years ago it's like the price is going higher and higher and higher and then a lot of people feel that oh my god I'm missing out on the bull run and hence a lot of people just follow other people because they don't want to miss out not because they feel that oh Bitcoin the intrinsic value is a lot higher than this let me just get in no most of those people who went in a few years ago are just scared that they are going to miss out on the profits so in the stock market you can see that after every crash after every crash right you would have a bull market and again you see a little bit of accumulation phase over here and also accumulation over here this one is a lot shorter and of course after that the market went on a bull run and one thing you need to know especially when it comes to stock market is that bull markets tend to last longer than bear markets do you realize that how long did this bull market last as compared to the crash how long did this bull market last as compared to this crash over here final stage of a bullish trend so it occurs right at the end of the bullish trend and this attracts dumb money to buy so dumb money will come in and buy because they feel that oh my god i'm missing out and then smart money what do they do they sell off their shares because they know that market's gonna turn anytime soon and it is more short-lived as compared to accumulation phase so the market would range a bit before it breaks down onto a bearish trend so the break on the downside depends on the duration of consolidation so there's a general rule that says that okay if the market ranges really long the breakout after that would last a very long time but if the range only lasts for a short period of time and if a breakout does happen the breakout is just going to last for a short time meaning the trend after that breakout is going to last for a short time so after a breakout downwards from the distribution phase you would have another trending phase which is bear markets some people stock investors they would buy put options to hedge against their portfolio some people would just get out completely then if you are a forest trader you can look for a sell trade because this is how we roll we can make money in any type of market whereas for the dumb money just now they were buying buying and buying during distribution phase and when the market goes down and down and down they are going to be like oh no oh shoot let me just just sell everything so there is a lot of panic selling there's a lot of fear and like I said bear market normally lasts for a short time as compared to bull market just like the bear market that you see this year only lasted for a while there are so many investors who wish that oh my god I wish that the bear market could last longer I wish it could crash again because they didn't digest the fact that bear market is only here for a while so, so you can see that the bear market earlier this year started in around February and only lasted until end of March and this is where I told a lot of you guys to buy certain stocks I don't know how many people took action but and along the way as the bull market comes back you see minor retracements along the way and this is where a lot of the investors who sort of miss out they have another opportunity to get in from here but what is a better time to buy of course right after the market crash which is somewhere over here all right so some of the price action principles you need to understand to increase your probability of making money so the first thing you need to increase your probability of winning is to trade at confluence levels to make things simple i'm just gonna put in a hundred moving average because I don't want to confuse you too much okay so this is the 100 SMA so I have a trend line over here now with trend lines again there are a lot of different types of trend lines good quality trend lines and also bad quality trend lines so as you already know moving average they can act as a dynamic support so you can see 
there are many times where price came down and then bounced off 100 moving average over here and also over here so trend line is also our support if i'm to ask you which support which floor is stronger the first one where it only has moving average second one where it only has trend line third one where it has both moving average and trend line which one is stronger and some more there's a little support over here which one is stronger one two or three so you already know the answer you got double layer of flooring in fact triple layer of flooring support at point number three so this is what I mean by confluence level. It means that you have many layers of support or resistance. So if you want to pick a high probability point to enter, point number three would be a better place. And to add to your confirmation, what you can do is that you can look at the details. Like I said, what are the candlestick patterns telling you while it tests the confluence level? So for example, over here, it tests your 100 SMA and also test your trend line. You can see that this candlestick over here. It gave you a long lower wick and a small body on top. So if you know to read candlestick psychology, you know that buyers are in control at this point in time. And the next candlestick that comes out is a confirmation because this is a bullish candlestick signal. Same thing with this point over here. But a better entry point would be over here. Why is that? Because one of the rules for trend line is that you would want to enter at the third touch. Because if you enter on the second touch over here, probability would be lower. I know some traders, they do that. They enter on the second point. But it is more risky because the trend line is not confirmed yet. On the third point, when the price came down here and test trend line and SMA, our 100 SMA also give you two candlesticks with long lower wick and it tells you that buyers are in control and hence this would be a good point to enter and also the other thing about price action is that you can use it to exit a trade so for example if you see a bearish trend and at the end of the bearish trend you see a chart pattern that tells you that hey potentially price is going to reverse if you understand chart patterns, this is an inverted head and shoulder. So right after this pattern is formed, it went on the breakout. If you draw a trend line that slopes downwards like this. And if you are in a sell trade somewhere over here, you can use this to exit the trade. So the other way that you can use price action in your trading is learn how to spot the false signals and also breakouts. So along the way, if you trade the range, you would have false breakouts. So if you look at this distribution phase over here, price came up here, broke this resistance, and it gave you a false breakout because right after that, the price came back down. And one of the clues in which you can see is that this candlestick pattern, this big green candlestick pattern, followed by a small red candlestick pattern, this is a bearish pattern. So if you see this formation, it tells you that potentially price might go back down. It might bounce off from here, but another possibility is that it can go back to the range. And hence, this would be the false breakout. So another example, just now we are talking about resistance. Now let's look at support. You can see over here, we have a support line, but of course you should be drawing a support zone. But just to make things simple for you, we have a support line over here, okay? So the price tested this point, this point, this point. And when the price broke this support, you can see a big red candle followed by a small green candle. And if you know candlestick patterns, this is a bullish sign a big red candle followed by a small green candle of course i would prefer this small green candle to be a little bit smaller and of course this is another false breakout that we have some people would use price filter some people would use pit filter some people would use duration filter but if you just look at candlestick patterns alone it can give you a lot of clues even over here red candle followed by a larger green candle 
this is a bullish sign. Okay, so this tells you that potentially price is going to go back up into the range. So basically, you have two candles. Then if the third candle closes above the high of the second candle, then this is a confirmation that this is a false breakout. Same thing with the previous one. When the third candle closes below the low of the second candle, then this is a confirmation that it is a false breakout. Resistance over here, price broke resistance, and it forms sort of like a spinning top. Now, spinning top doesn't mean anything. That's why you need an additional confirmation in the next candle. So you can see that when the next candle forms, it sort of created a triple candlestick pattern in which some people will call this an evening star, but it's not perfect. Okay? But the confirmation comes in the third candle. The third candle closes below the low of the second candle. This is a confirmation that this breakout is false. So the third way in which you can use price action. If you're somebody who just use indicators, it doesn't harm you to add price action as a confirmation. So what you can do is that you can look for a bullish candlestick pattern. So you can see price came down here, test our 100 SMA, test our trend line. And at the same time, if you look at it carefully, you have a big red candle followed by small green candle and this two candlestick pattern is a bullish signal. I'm not going to go through the names because I don't want to confuse you. Just understand that these two combined together is a bullish signal. So your CCI went to oversold and then you have a bullish signal with confluence and hence this is going to increase your probability of making a good trade. So aside from these three things which I have covered and create confidence levels. You gotta learn to differentiate between the true breakouts and also false breakouts and also use price action as a confirmation for your indicators. Another few ways to increase your probability is to apply it on two higher time frames. If you've been on my channel for quite some time now, you know that the higher time frame signals will very often give you higher probability signals. If the price breaks above trend line on a higher time frame, the breakout is going to be stronger. If a chart pattern is formed in a higher time frame, the chart pattern will have a higher probability of working out. So to further increase your probability, trade it on liquid markets and also in this case liquid currency pairs. If you are a beginner, trade along with the trend, not against the trend. And make sure you have a simple strategy and follow it with discipline. You can have the best price action trading strategy in the world, but if you don't follow it with discipline, nothing is going to change. So some of the price action tools you can use, aside from candlesticks, you can use support resistance lines. And again, support resistance line is not really a line, but it's more of a zone. And use trend lines, candlestick patterns, high and lows, channels, chart patterns, volatility, and also breakouts. And to make this course simple for you, let's talk about something which is not too complicated. So let's talk about trend lines. How do you find and draw a high probability trend line? First thing first, you need to understand that for a bullish trend, you draw the trend line below the price points. So price will come down and your trend line would act as a support. And if you're looking at the bearish trend, then you draw your trend line above the charts and hence your trend line would become a resistance. And of course trend lines would only work if you draw it in a trending market. It's called a trend line for a reason. It's not called range line. It's not called volatile line. It's called trend line. So you apply trend lines to trending markets. So some of the principles of trend line, you use it to determine market conditions and the direction of the trend. And it helps you determine which strategy to apply. And of course, helps you determine potential entry points, TP points, stop loss points, TP points, TP levels. And it's pretty subjective because we can look at the same chart, but then the way we draw trend lines would 
be different. It will look different. But as a general rule, it should connect at least two highs or two lows. And it is a work in progress until the third point of touch. So to be safe, you need to enter on the third point of touch. I know a lot of people, they would enter on the second point, but the trend line is not confirmed yet. So it is a lot more risky. If you go shopping for handbags today, there are high quality handbags, there are low quality handbags. Same thing with trend lines. There are high quality trend lines and there are also low quality trend lines. So what makes a trend line strong or high quality? First thing first, you apply it on the trending market. Second thing, use it on higher time frames. Number of retest, distance be between test points. So the further the distance between the test points, the stronger would be the trend line. Confluence area, like I said just now, not too steep. What do I mean by not too steep? So if you look at this bullish trend over here, I drew a couple of trend lines. Make sure you don't draw too many trend lines because it will become a freaking spider web. You are not Spider-Man, okay? You can see all these yellow trend lines, they are very steep, right? They are very steep, but then they only last for a short amount of time. And the distance between the test points is not too far away from each other. So you realize that all these steep trend lines, when there's a breakout that occurs on the downside, okay, you can see this trend line over here tests these two points. Broke this trend line, came down, retraced only a little bit. Broke this trend line, came down, retraced a little bit before it continues to go on an uptrend. To make your life simple, try not to draw all these minor trend lines because they are low quality trend lines. You know, just like a low quality and back. You don't want to buy that unless you are freaking cheaper. If you are looking for a high quality trend line, you want to look for something like this. Like I said just now, and not be too steep. By steep, I mean anything more than 45 degrees. And also the test points, the distance between the test points. One, two, three over here, four. You can say that it is pretty far away as compared to test points like this one. Okay, which only lasted, I guess, a little bit more than a day. If you look at this test point as compared to this test point, it lasted for more than one week. And also this test point with this test point. Okay, this one as well. So what is a strong trend line? A strong trend line is a trend line that when there's a breakout on the downside, the breakout would last for a very long time. Of course, when the price breaks out, once in a while, it will come back up. It will come back up and test the trend line and became a resistance before it continues to go down. So some traders, they will wait for this retest before they decide whether they want to make a trade or not. Okay, so this example over here, we have an ascending triangle. Price broke out over here and came back and tested our trend line for the third time. Tested the 100 SMA, which is our white line. Also tested this resistance, which became support. Okay, so there's a good confidence level over here. And also this trend line is not too steep. And this candlestick over here, you can see that it produced a long lower wick followed by a small green candle. So you can say that this pattern over here, even though it's not perfect, it is a bullish signal. And some more you can see that your 50 SMA is above your 100 SMA. So the probability of the price going up from here would be higher as compared to the probability of the price going down. And of course, this is so-called the ideal world because in the real world, things are not that straightforward. There are false breakouts once in a while. And one thing you need to take note of is that the more false breakouts there are, the weaker the trend line. So if price comes down and tests the trend line to the dot, just like this, again and again without any false breakouts, then this tells you that the trend line is very strong. So this is another factor that you need to take note of. And also remember, draw the best fit line. It doesn't have to test every point, And also the points doesn't have to touch the trend line. 
it can come near the trend line, but it doesn't have to touch it. So you draw the trend line that touches the most amount of points, and that is what we call the best fit line. During this pandemic, I have launched courses, can candlestick trading course and also chart patterns course, and, and all of these courses are free because this is part of my pandemic giveaways just to give a favor to those people who support me and also to those who get retrenched because I know that a lot of people are going through a hard time financially so I try to help as much as I can so if you haven't checked out the candlestick course chart patterns course I'll put it up in the screen right now and also there are many other free courses fundamental analysis course is on my channel as well I wish you all the best in your trading so with that I'll talk to you in the next video. Bye.